Tessa's come back, nor do I think you should be held in an isolation facility when you do come back from vacation. I hope Rod Phillips had an amazing time down there, and I hope that these uh, bureaucrats and politicians can get their shit together and allow the rest of us to act how them and their families act every day. You know, I'm with you 100%. I think this is a good news story, all these elected officials running off the hall to vacations, because what it says to me is that this virus, it isn't as dire as what they're making it out to be. They are setting a bunch of rules for us to follow, but they're the insiders. They have all the information, and obviously they don't feel it's as deadly as what's being depicted. So maybe just lift all the travel bans and let us all go on holiday without any problems. Oh, I think that'd be a great solution to all of this. I think they could just end it all right now. And hopefully uh, with our constitutional challenge that we're going to be bringing very shortly, uh, the whole reopening Ontario Act will be thrown out and we can all get back to the old normal. Yeah. And, and tell me, uh, give sure me uh, the last I saw you was literally being locked away <laughs> in a Toronto police cruiser, yeah. handcuffed no less, the mounted unit surrounding your restaurant. Um, in the last, I guess, six weeks now, uh, what have you been up to? Uh, where do you stand legally? Uh, how is the GoFundMe page? Can you give us some details for those questions? Uh, the GoFundMe page is great. It's about $3,000 more. Uh, it's about $3,000 more. more. challenge on the four different fronts that we have between the legal and the criminal civil uh, I found out uh, in the last week, really wrapped my head around everything that happened, how all those events unfolded. The Section 22 order, the closure order that they put on the restaurant, unlawful. The Section 24 order, that, that's how they, what they used to enforce uh, with all the police there that day, unlawful. The Trespass Property Act that they brought to uh, charge me with mischief and uh, obstructing police for reopening the restaurant, also unlawful. So feeling very confident, very excited, fired up for the court cases that we've uh, got coming up. And, and of course, you know, the way you were treated, uh, I think a lot of people think it was such an overreaction. I mean, for goodness sakes, the mounted unit came in and so there was an active shooting thing going on at your restaurant. I am wondering, Adam, when you look back upon those days in late November, do you think this was Mayor John Tory and uh, the public health officer Eileen Davila sending a message to other retailers in Toronto that if you dare have the temerity of Adam Skelly and try to pull one of these illegal openings, guess what? This is what happens. Literally, all the king's men and all the king's horses come come into your establishment. Was that what was really happening that day? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I don't have, well, how could you think anything else? I don't think anybody in their right mind would think that having uh, 75 cops and six horses to stop a guy from selling pulled pork sandwiches is reasonable uh, by <laughs> any measure. <laughs> I think we're in agreement there, David. Do you think in a way they might have won? I, I would say, hey Vlad, uh, I would say, Adam, if the, if tens and twenties and hundreds and thousands of businesses reopened in Toronto, they don't have enough resources to shut them down the way they did you, but it looks like with very limited you know, uh, operators here and there popping up, there is not this, I guess, groundswell of uh, retailers, gyms, restaurants uh, willing to break the law. So do you think this show of force, in a way, kind of did work in, in terms of making an example out of you, in terms of sending a message to other operators? It may have worked for a short period of time, but once we start having success in the courts, uh, that's going to be a huge change. Also, if you go to weareessential.ca, there's a whole network of businesses that have already registered for this. Uh, we, there's weekly Zoom calls happening where you can come in, talk to other businesses that have opened talk to other businesses who are just on the verge of reopening uh, and you know other leaders in the community like Futuristic Fitness here that's who you came to see today uh, who have opened their gyms in protest and there will be more and more every single day uh, we act actually well, I can't keep up with the amount of messages that are coming in from business owners who are right there ready to do it so you're gonna see a bit that groundswell it's it's here it just hasn't uh, exploded yet well we'll have to see what happens and, and speaking of Futuristic Fitness um, a what do you think is gonna happen today and B um, I guess you're in the best position of all of us here to give advice on how to handle, uh, I guess, the uh, visit from law enforcement. What do you have to say to the ownership? Uh, well, we've already had that conversation inside. I think he's doing a great job. He showed a lot of courage in reopening his place. Uh, you'll have to ask him about the strategies that he's going to be using. I've given him a couple pieces of advice on how uh, everything went down with me and how he can avoid some of that stuff happening to him. They don't have uh, Eileen de Villa's not in the area to uh, you try to <laughs> impose all these unlawful orders or Eileen Devlin. 
it's a little bit more <laughs> fitting. Uh, but she's not here, so there, there hasn't been any problems yet. So we'll go inside and talk to him and, and see how he's going to handle it today. And, and, you know, whether it's Eileen Davila or so many other elected officials, that's the thing. I mean, you're an entrepreneur. You're just trying to run a restaurant. You're just trying to make a living for you and your, your young family. A lot of these people imposing these laws, they're bureaucrats, they're politicians. They've never had to run a balance sheet. They've never had to make payroll. Do you think there's maybe yeah, a lack of... Nor have they ever missed a paycheck yet or taken a pay cut or experienced a temporary yeah. COVID yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. everybody else. Yeah, because they're all here yeah. right now. Yeah. The highest unemployment in the G7 right now. I yeah. think yeah. you can quote me on that. Yeah. And these guys haven't missed a day of work and nor have they missed a paycheck. Gee, and I thought yeah. we were all in this together. Yeah, it seems like, uh, yeah, we're all in this together, but we certainly aren't all in the same boat. A lot of these politicians are on their boats in uh, maybe Barbados, Barts. Yeah, well, we're here hanging on to a life raft. Well, Adam, I want to thank you for your time, as always. And uh, tell us, when, oh, when is the Etobicoke location of Adamson Barbecue going to open up? There's a whole bunch of people out there that are dying for your pulled pork yeah. sandwiches. Uh, probably, I think that's going to be next weekend. Uh, there's still oh. a lot of legal conditions where if I open it up for in restaurant dining, I'll go straight back to jail. I'm not willing to do that for a long period of time. So we'll open up for takeout, and then we have a bunch of other options that we're pursuing too. So you'll see some more stuff happening. Okay. Well, happy new year, Adam, and all the best in 21. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Vlad. How you doing?